Um, so I gave a definition. This is quite funny, because here I am in New Zealand. I'm not in a relationship. I'm not married, nothing like that. And, and here I'm describing this physical intimacy like he mentioned in the, in the movie there. I was like, okay, it invi involves the five senses. I can understand kissing, touching, and all these things, and the physical intimacy. And I'm describing this as the highest pleasure of your... Of your <laughs> it's like I'm pawning myself for what's coming, right? I was like, wow. And I did use the Song of Solomon as you read that through, and you're like, wow, this must be absolutely incredible. It's wonderful as you think about these things. So I, I think it's comical. I was reading it last day. I'm like, yeah, here I was writing about all this stuff I didn't even know about, right? And now I do, and yeah, it, it is pretty good. <laughs> but I would say that there is different levels to this intimacy. Uh, the pure mechanics uh, obviously is there, uh, and I've actually talked to some people back when I was in the Philippines that, um, you know, got sort of into that scene where they went to, uh, uh, what are the burlesque house or whatever like that, and they're like, yeah, it's like playing cards or something. It's just, just flat. There's nothing there. It was just like empty, right? So obviously when people come to me and discuss relationships or whatever, and they're like, well, okay, your friends first? You know, do you have that intimacy? Are, are you strictly physical? Like, you know, you just layer these as an onion, right? True love. Apropos topic for Valentine's Day. Much money, time, heartache, um, uh, Hollywood. Everyone's talking about true love. You know, when we probably know more um, because we know the true love actually comes through Christ you know, who died for us, and that's our, 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 our measure of what true love is. But people that are unchurched, true love is like this mystical thing. It's like, wow, you know, and there's many movies out there that sort of portray this, and you're like, well, can I capture that? Can I have that? I want that. So I asked, what is true love, and how can you define it? Um, when I worked at the Royal Bank, our email system could send out emails, but for security purposes, we couldn't retrieve any. It just being a bank and stuff, so, you know, it was like, and I said one day, I said, our email system actually defines what true love is. They're like, wow, you're crazy, what are you talking about? I was like, well, it says you can just send out to everyone, you know, this nice little message, but you can never receive anything, you never know if they even got your message, right? So you send without receiving. And this analogy, um, it's likened to Christ, what he did for us, you know, he died for all of us, and does he expect anything in return? No, it's grace. He did that because he loves us. So that sort of true love being a one-way thing where you, know, you just you give for your, your beloved, not for what you want to get, and um, that unselfish giving. So you can imagine the uh, blissful state of a good relationship that has this, where each partner is giving to each other without expecting in return. Just, wow. You know? And then sort of knowing that their needs are, are going to be met. Uh, what a what a great uh, what a what a great analogy or a great thing to mimic what Christ has done for us in that true love. So next intimacy I talk about is emotional intimacy. This emotional intimacy can be described using the heart. So l'amour, you know this Walt Disney you know, little comics with that little whatever he is and he's got little heart above his head and he's Ooh. I think he's a skunk or something like that. It's like true love. Um, this is one of the most interesting one because it leaves our hearts on a high or a low depending on, uh, you know, what our relationships are at. So we either we have a skip in our step or we have a blanket of doom that comes over us. Um, it's very important, this intimacy, uh, to, to develop this one because it is a lasting intimacy, the emotion, the heart. You know, we all have hearts. Uh, and it's it should be something developed in proper timing. So I think you need to develop this probably after you know the person for a while. Now, after saying all that, I'll take it all back. <laughs> because this intimacy has no rules either. It is as individual as we are. So if we are like the Romeo and Juliet type, you know, oh, Romeo, Romeo, where are far thou, you know? You know, that type of oozing, pathetic, romantic, uh, emotional, emotional person, or you could be the Iron Class Rambo or Bruce Willis type. Arr! I'm never going to show my inner heart. I'm, you know, Iron Clad heart. I am, I am solid. So there's still emotional intimacy for even Rambo. He's still got emotions, but we display it in different colors. And so there's no real rules here. It's, um, it's as individual as we are. 
And I believe that there's probably some danger in this intimacy. You know, we joke about people that run off to Vegas to get married or they elope because nobody, they want people to know what they're up to. Uh, it's a very romantic side with lots of flowers and passion and music and good intentions. Uh, the real danger of this intimacy, if it's not coupled with anything, it just sort of, it goes away. It's like, it can't last forever. It's, it's sort of a, um, there, you know, the romantic side. So if it's coupled with uh, another type of intimacy, it lasts longer. So one of my favorite movies, actually, is Princess Bride. So here's a good example of kind of the uh, over-the-top emotional intimacy that's not grounded. My true love will always come for me which I thought was really funny. Or comments like, it's, if it's not, it, it must be true love. Not even death will separate them. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> I still like the movie a lot, but that's like way okay. So this is apparently, and I've talked to some people, and this is their view of true love, by the way. They think that that's where it's at. You've got to find that in the world. Thinking, well, you ain't going to find anything. Just, you know, find Christ and you've got it, right? But, uh, you know, you obviously have to sit with them and have a, a relationship before you can share that with them. So what about romance then? So I have a, a little image. You know, when you're sitting on a sailboat, uh, Lowell Ross will enjoy this. Um, when you're on the sails and you've got your boat and your rudder and then you've got all your uh, ropes and everything to keep your sail in. And then you've got the wind that just, whoosh, you know, blows freely. It's unpredictable. Goes everywhere, blows everything. So romance can be thought as like the wind. It's like all over the place and it's just, uh, there. Whereas the ropes and the rudder and the sails, you know, kind of a little bit more, you want to capture that and you have to ground that. So that would be like the wisdom to ground the sails so you can capture the wind and your sailboat can go. Without the ropes or, or the rudder or any of these things to control the wisdom of that part, um, your boat's just going to flap away. There's not going to be any movement at all. And I think same with romance, not coupled with wisdom, uh, then you ain't going anywhere. Um, then I went on to describe more, so I'll skip that a little bit, because uh, what is wisdom? And I describe, you know, more about the Holy Spirit and how he gives us wisdom and, and the different things. 